Hey what's up and welcome back to the channel this is the broken geek and in today's tutorial we just continue from the previous video where we looked at the input or how to input the loads when we're using the column based design module this is the module you use to design pad footing so in today's video what we're going to do is we're going to continue and today we're going to look at the design the theory behind the design and what it actually means when you click the design tab so without wasting too much time let's just get right into the video Okay, so to kick start the video, first I need to address a little mix up that happened in the previous video. Now remember, when it says LF, it means the load factor and when it says SF, it means safe, safety factor. So for what you actually would want to do is to change your load factor, especially for overturning to 1.1 and change everything in this direction to 1.1 or even when you come to the load or unfected loads, you may even input it as 1.4 to match the ultimate limit state factor load factor but when it comes to self-weight overturning this is what you would actually want to put to 0.9 now some of you may be asking why are you saying this this is remember the higher the load factor the greater your load thus you are increasing the chances of your base over toppling therefore it will then come up with a design that is much much stronger for you so in this case as i said if you're a beginner you would want to increase it or increase your load factors and lower your safety factors because your safety factors will then reduce the chances of you the higher the safety factor it reduces the chances of it toppling the lower the safety factor it increases the chances of it toppling so what it will mean then to, in order to cater for that toppling it will then come up with a design that will be able to cater for the top lane effect so in this case when you still design and you want to be conservative your load factors need to be higher and your safety factors need to be lower so in this case what we're going to do is we're just going to mirror everything control 1.6 there control c then put it there control c then put it there control c control it was supposed to control c there, then control v and control v so this would be the perfect setup for anyone who's still starting out and you're still a beginner and you don't understand most of how the loads will be on this but this the only problem is the design you will get is not going to be economical now once you're done and you've input your loads you've changed them for in this case everything is changed to 1.4 let me just make sure this is still 1.4 right once you've done everything the next step you need to do is click on design and this is what you need to know before we do that when you click on design the column is going to be designed for compliance with the ultimate limit state and service of limited state conditions that govern or require uh, what it will do it will give you the required reinforcement to resist the ultimate moments right and then it will also calculate the linear and margin shear checks for you and also the stability of the base is evaluated at both ultimate and serviceability limit state so to forward for you to carry out those three steps all you have to do is click on design in this case it will remind you you're in Procon demo and fcu is limited 15 but in this case you will see it will not be too much of a problem the reason why is you can see everything is calculated well enough for us so on this page after you click design you're greeted with this user interface now the first step at the top of the section this button allows you to to navigate between the various load cases that you have in our case the worst load case was case one so we stick with case one then it will also ask you calculate shear using required flexural rebar or entered flexural rebar so in this case you always want to calculate the shear using the required flexural rebar so that it gives you the nominal and as for entered flexural rebar you can always then redo this after you've edited it in the bending schedule so first things first you calculate the shear using the required flexural rebar now having covered this section the next section we now need to look for is the output for each load case now the first section will be for the stability checks right and in this one it's quite easy the first one will be as well for stability checks yes where we have overturning and the factor for slip and uplift but obviously the first two results are in regard to the bearing pressure but then this is mostly for serviceability as well now but uh, when it comes to the soil pressure this will tell you that at the ultimate limit state this will be the soil pressure at 168.78 and at uh, serviceability limit say it tells you it's 116.27 but remember we entered 250 
And in our case, the result is 168 and 160, so we are good enough to go when it comes to the bearing pressure that is allowed. Right? Next, for the stability checks, which are the ones that we need to look at, we need to understand the stability values are calculated for overturning, slip, and bearing pressure, as we already mentioned, is calculated. And this is done at both ultimate limit state and serviceability limit state. Now, so for overturning, which is a safety factor for overturning SLS and safety factor for overturning ULS, ultimate limit and serviceability limit. What you need to understand is the applied loads are multiplied by the entered load factors for overturning to calculate the ratio of destabilizing to stabilizing effect. At serviceability limit state, the calculations are performed using the unaffected working load. So in other words, it will use those loads that you just entered there. Now, going back to design as well, for slip, that is the safety factor for slip and the safety factor for uplift. What it just says is at the ultimate limit state, right? All the forces are going to be multiplied by the ultimate limit state load factors. That is to say the load factors that you input in this column. And after that is done, uh, the factor, the safety factor for slip is calculated by dividing the resistant passive soil pressure and friction by the horizontal forces as well, which will be causing the slip. The same calculation will also be calculated for serviceability limit state, but now it will be using the unaffected forces. So uh, all I'm saying, I mean, let me just also give a recap for the bearing pressure as well. Uh, the, you know, the, the factored loads are what is used for the ultimate limit state and for the serviceability limit. But just to summarize quickly, all these things that I've been telling you or just describing to you, the basis or the theory behind this thing is just to say, once you input the loads and you press design, as long as you don't have anything in red for this first two, and as long as these two are greater than 100, your design is safe. In case where that is not the case, you need to go back to input and play around with either the size of your base or the column, What? because you really cannot play around with the loads because that is what will be there. So in summary, all this is trying to say is if the first two figures are in red, please go back. If any of these four figures is less than 100, please go back and play with the geometry of your base. Now we're done with that. Next thing we need to look at is the reinforcement calculation. Now for the reinforcement calculation, this is what it does. It gives you the bottom and the top, and it gives you for each layer, the X layer and the Y layer. In this case, what it does, it gives you or calculates you know, the required moment. On, let me not say this. It's not the required moment. It's the moment that is going to be occurring in the X direction for you. And in this case, for this particular one, it's going to be 7.3 or kilo newton meters per meter. And then what it does, it goes on further to calculate the reinforcement in the X that is required to cater for that moment. In this case, you need 48 square millimeters per meter. It also does it for the Y, and in this case, you need 8.84, you have rather 8.84 kilonewtons meters per meter, and the reinforcement you need is 59 square meters per meter. Now, when it goes to the top, that is going to be the top of the base, what it is saying is the moment is going to be zero, the steel you need is zero, the moment is zero, and the steel that you need is zero. So in this case, this base will only have bottom steel, so you're good to go. So that is all it is when it comes to calculating the band and moments and the base. And just remember, it uses the normal code formula to obtain the required reinforcement. So you find that the moment you, 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 the, the moment you get with Procone is the same moment you will get if you use manual calculations using whatever code that you will have, right? Now, last but not least on this section, we have the shear checks. So what? it does when it comes to the sheet checks is that the required reinforcement that is calculated for us in the above is then used to calculate the shear resistance vc in the x and y direction and for punch and shear the value is based on the average required reinforcement in two directions and if you can go it shows you where you have your maximum moment maximum negative moment and even where you have the maximum shear depending on what you can zoom in then go to the legend and see where you have the maximum moment in the positive this is where it's going to be then the maximum negative is going to be there and where you're going to have your shear. And in this case, it's outside our base. Now, to best interpret it, what it does this, it shows you the linear shear you have in the X direction as linear shear X where it has the green. Then it gives you the maximum capacity of this base 
it's telling us the shear is zero in this direction, but the maximum capacity that we have VC is 0 0.336. And then when it comes to the Y, the shear we have is zero, but the VC is 0 0.336 again. This is mostly because the column is centered and the base is square. So it is symmetrical. So what it is just trying to say, and also it goes on to say the linear shear is also zero. So basically what this means is as long as the shear that you have or the value that you have wherever you have the highlighted value or where you have green, uh, this is a shade of green. I'll go with, I don't think it's olive, but I'll think it's turquoise. So we'll say wherever you have the turquoise green, this, the value that you have there has to be less than the one that is given under VC. In our case, all of these are less than 0 0.336, 0 0.336, and they're good to go. In the case where it was too much, this would be highlighted in red, and you would need to go back to the input and change whatever you put in. Last but not least, what we have is the pungent sheet. Now, the pair of shear parameters are considered at one and a half times the base thickness from the column faces. If you want, please verify with your code or any textbook that you want. Now, Various combinations as for internal, edge, and corner columns are going to be considered. But the gist of it, all it is going to say to you is, if the pattern shear that is in the base is greater than the, the VC or the VCU or the VC of the column at the face, what it will just mean is this pattern shear will be highlighted in red and your base will fail with regards to pattern shear. But in our case, it's so minimum that it is not even available. So that's why they have an NA. So in other words, it's just telling us the space is good to go. And remember, when we put the input, we put the cost as 92 and 115. In this case, it's just telling us to create this space, we're going to need to use $46.9. So this will cost us $46. US that is if I put in the actual cost for concrete per cubic and reinforcement per ton. So this mere base will just cost you 46 US dollars, which is equal to, I think, I don't know, a couple of pizzas. Um, yeah, but this could be like a single two dates. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's quite cheap if you ask, you know, save two dates, you can build a base. So it's up to you. But this is it. With except, so this has been the gist of it when it comes to now analyzing and the design results. So this is where all your design results will be. And we've also talked about how to interpret them. So just make sure, just one thing that I'll tell you is, as long as nothing is in red, it means your design is good to go. And all you have to do is now go to the calc sheets, right? Remember, this is your calculation sheets. You can zoom in. This will give you all the output that you want. And if you want to improve something that is maybe not in there, if you want to include the reinforcement sketch, you can. But for now, we haven't looked at the reinforcement sketch. We'll do it later on. So what we're going to do, and you can also choose the load cases you want. If you want to put all of them, it's okay. It's not a problem. All you do is just reload and have all the input loads for you. And all you have to do is maybe go to edit the header, load the default, right? Set today's date and click OK. And once you're done, you can print it out or even send it to the calc pad and you'll be good to go. In this case, what I'm just going to do is we had saved this base as tutorial base 10 base. Although this is tutorial 11, but this was done in tutorial 10, so we're good to go. Then the next thing that you'd want to do is now go to the pending schedule and this will be the last thing we will need to talk about so what i'm going to do is wrap the video here because there's a lot of things we need to talk about here as well so thank you very much for tuning in if this is your first time please do subscribe leave a like leave a comment if you want anything please check the links in the description box or any of the links that i will putting up in the video anything on the screen and yay please leave comment if you want to learn anything else that's new but remember even in demo we can still learn program so remember i'm not sponsored by program software consultants I don't get paid by progress of the consultants. I'm just doing this because I love you guys and you are the best people I've ever seen. So until we waste, without wasting too much time, let's wrap the video and I'll see you in tutorial 12.